if you will have a few minutes to look around, visit an exhibition of Emma Andrievska. We have more in our collection. This is, let's say, the best. We also have uh, a culture called 600, 700 pieces. And sometimes we have very interesting musical activities also. Within our um, center, we have uh, a choir for China, which is a very famous Ukrainian choir. We have uh, an ensemble of ancient music that performs uh, Baroque and older. And we have a lot of different dancing studios held by students themselves. And we also have special class for teacher, uh, professors and employees of our university of workers because they also want to dance. So this is a place where we have lectures, music, dancing, arts of any kind. And again, you're very welcome upstairs on the third floor. We right now have an exhibition of head of our art studio, Ivan Sepura. This is a mixed exhibition of drawings, paintings, objects, shadows and light, and also videos. So enjoy being here. And I would like also to thank you, uh, my dear friends, Sahim Erne, for the initiative which brought here a colleague from the Babylonian University. I'm happy to have you here. Thank you very much for sharing knowledge and emotions. And I hope that we will all have very productive uh, time right now. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you, Vladislava. Thank you for hosting our event. <coughs> and moreover, I uh, hope, I suppose, and I'm almost sure that this event will uh, start a long term uh, cooperation uh, between. Uh, Cultural Center of, of Kiev Wakila Academy and between uh, Chernobyl, uh, Chernobyl Tour Guides Group and uh, different other activities which are connected with the revival of the Chernobyl uh, era. <coughs> and I'm really happy uh, that uh, Magdalena Banaskevich uh, from, uh, from uh, Krakow, uh, famous, uh, Krakow, the famous Gagelonian uh, uh, University, uh, visited our and that Magdalena starts uh, uh, this uh, cooperation. Uh, before giving the floor to Magdalena, I would like to say just um, literally uh, several sentences about uh, how come uh, that uh, Magdalena uh, came uh, to this place. Uh, and the thing is that the Chernobyl uh, accident turned uh, disaster uh, was a principally new experience for human civilization, like it was World War I, like it, it was the first space flight, uh, like Holocaust, both positive and negative events. Such events made humankind uh, to rethink uh, uh, its own self and to rethink the environment, the, uh, this physical, natural, and mental space we live in. And nature, uh, quite naturally, because of this uh, um, unprecedented, uh, principally new uh, nature of the Chernobyl accident, uh, pre-Chernobyl uh, techniques of uh, scientific research, many of them, uh, failed uh, to uh, fully grasp uh, the uh, scope of this event and hence to correctly interpret it. And great, but gradually, uh, a new wave of uh, post Chernobyl uh, research of uh, uh, adequate uh, new research tools, tools emerged. And uh, only now they uh, are more or less uh, uh, adequately represent this event. Uh, and among them, uh, uh, smaller phenomena, uh, phenomena which uh, uh, exist within this big framework of of Chernobyl, the Chernobyl disaster and post-Chernobyl world is a, a phenomenon of uh, uh, Chernobyl tourism. A tourism to the Chernobyl zone, which uh, uh, in essence uh, turned out to be one of the inheritable tools of uh, post-accident uh, revival of uh, post-accident mitigation. Moreover, this principally new activity uh, then uh, uh, expanded uh, to a new notion of uh, which I called in my research post-radiation accident to tourism, embracing 
uh, first of all, was Chernobyl, then Fukushima, it was after Fukushima uh, that this, uh, the necessity of such uh, notion uh, emerged. And then Singapore Lions uh, nuclear test site, Nevada nuclear test uh, site, and then, you know, it should be expected more open the next uh, step of generalization was uh, the emergency, the, the emergence, the appearance of uh, the kind of tourist which was uh, very shrewdly called existential tourism. You know, and uh, again, I, I, uh, I'm a bit proud that I also um, somehow contributed to, to this important intellectual step because uh, a couple of Western researchers uh, from Great Britain and from Sweden, they uh, studied the um, websites of the uh, three leading two operators and based on the um, text which they put uh, uh, at, the at the Chernobyl tour sites, uh, in which I uh, tried to express uh, what happens with tourists when they visit zone. So, and they eventually, uh, those two researchers, uh, coined a new term, uh, term existential tourism, meaning the kind of tourism which is not a pure entertainment, so to say, but uh, a kind of uh, absolutely vital experience which helps people to reshape uh, their, uh, uh, their self-esteem, uh, their prior life, life priorities, and again, the world uh, which they live in. So, it is uh, uh, this uh, broad framework within which uh, uh, our uh, honorable guest, Magdalena Panaskevich, uh, 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 makes uh, uh, her research. Uh, her research uh, focuses all on, on, on the uh, controversial uh, post-socialist sites as tourist destination. And in particular, uh, with uh, Chernobyl tourism and how it is uh, interpreted. I am really very happy that um, Magdalena deals uh, uh, with Chernobyl tourism not, you know, in the narrow Chernobyl perspective. It, it is exactly this kind of approach which uh, um, undermines uh, many of research, you know, this uh, narrow disciplinarity. But uh, Magdalena also uh, researches it uh, within the framework of, for example, uh, tourism to Lenin's mausoleum in Moscow, uh, tourism to Novakuta industrial region uh, in Prague, which is a very famous uh, uh, industrial site of, uh, uh, of how it's called, the Soviet satellite, satellite countries, and not, not satellite countries, not only of, of Poland. You know, and things like this. So, you know, I am inviting uh, Magdalena and giving the uh, first floor, and I expect a very interesting and uh, productive lecture and uh, communication. Magdalena will, will uh, make what I will, okay, uh, what I will, what I will say kind of um, overview of, 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 the, of the topic and of uh, her current research. Uh, it won't be a lecture. So I, I guess uh, you are welcome to ask questions if uh, you, 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 you feel like doing this during the conversation. But most importantly, that the major, majority of the time will be allocated to the uh, communication with the audience, to answer your questions, to uh, you know, listen to your opinions, things like this. Okay, let's have a uh, communication. Thank you very much for this warm welcoming. Um, and for your hospitality, um, I, I must admit at first that I'm very intimidated for being here. Uh, firstly, because it's very, very hard to speak as an outsider to the locals who know the issue uh, by their practice, and I'm from outside still, so I do some, some research here, but uh, I feel that this is not something that I can share with you, uh, as you do, uh, within your community. So this is the first issue that uh, feels that like I feel very intimidated. Secondly, because of proficiency, and I really hope for our productive discussion, and this is just kind of an outline to provoke some discussion with you on interpretation of heritage. And 
uh, focusing on that very, very special place, uh, which is um, Chernobyl exclusion zone. And this is the third uh, moment where I feel intimidated because of seriousness of the topic. And uh, I feel it very, very strongly um, because I was born in 1983 and my younger sister was born just uh, two weeks before the disaster. And this is kind of my personal history, my personal memories. Uh, while she was um, doing her first walking um, that, that day, which was very sunny, beautiful uh, April's day. And this is something that uh, we always uh, go back to uh, with my parents and with my family during birthday celebrations. So we make some jokes on that issue. Uh, everybody has that personal memories in Poland uh, connected with Lugol's uh, drinking, etc. So this is kind of generational memory for us. And therefore, I've, this is my very personal subjective connection with that topic, which makes it uh, very strong to me and uh, very impressive. And I really feel that this is kind of obligation and the duty uh, to talk about it. Maybe not mission, because this is a very strong word, but uh, still uh, something that we are responsible for to uh, talk more broadly. Therefore, um, I've decided to give this uh, well outline, let's call it a lecture, uh, in connection to the research that I'm doing um, at my academic life right now for already two years. And I'm just somewhere in the middle, I suppose, although I need to finish uh, that research um, in uh, uh, half a year. Um, why guides? Why their narratives? I will say a few words on the, on the topic of my uh, research uh, further, but uh, I also want to link it to my personal experience as being a tour guide in Krakow. As you know, it's near to Auschwitz, and this is also something that is very, very strong for us uh, as guides. And then that as we are touring um, groups in Krakow, we need to talk about the Second World War, about Holocaust, about Auschwitz. And uh, this is something that we acknowledge as uh, difficult heritage, decent heritage. So um, this slide showing you like this is what people think about being a guide actually is something that I don't really um, link to my personal attitude and I think uh, neither you do it. Uh, but this is sometimes a very, very, very popular um, generalization that tour leaders or guides have great job and this is just having fun. They are being paid for having holidays, vacations all the time. They travel a lot and just uh, drink uh, with visitors and with people. While I really think that being a guide is huge responsibility because of the fact that guides are sh should be treated as uh, heritage interpretators. So uh, plan for this presentation, and I really would like to do it briefly and later on talk with you. So I would like to start about some, uh, on some general issues connected with tourism development recently, which is obvious to you, but this is kind of introduction only. Uh, then I will um, summarize some idealistic concept of being a guide, uh, which is based on the literature, uh, both theoretical and practical, also guidebooks, how to be a guide. And then um, I would like to focus uh, on, the, uh, on the Chernobyl exclusion zones guiding on the basis of my um, experience and research. So this is the um, title of uh, my project, uh, which is Guiding and Witnessing. And uh, the basis for that is that um, we can regard the Chernobyl exclusion zone as decent heritage site. And um, that evokes some ambiguity connected with interpretation because of these different layers and aspects of uh, that site. And the most crucial role plays guides who uh, do this interpretation and just show this place to visitors. 
um, which means that um, their responsibility is also somehow linked to their personal experiences. And there is a strong generation gap between, let's say, old guides uh, who are ex-liquidators for, for example, all those who work um, in the power plant or used to work in the power plant, and let's say young guides uh, who work for, uh, for companies, tour companies, who has um, this different personal experience and their attitude toward this site is um, uh, varies uh, from the um, experience of those um, who are uh, older. But this is not uh, the, the general rule. I mean, uh, this project is uh, anthropological research, so I'm just trying to describe the situation. I'm not judging, I'm not uh, doing any categorization. I'm just trying to describe all these difficult connections uh, uh, within the zone, which can be treated as heritage site. And when we talk about heritage, there are various different stakeholders who are responsible for the management. And these are not only uh, official institutions as the agency, but these are also uh, local people, community, uh, self-settlers, those who, uh, who abandoned uh, or were forced to abandon uh, Pripyat and other uh, places, those who work for tourism industry, in tourism industry, but these are also media who uh, do this interpretation uh, job as well. So these various st stakeholders can have contradictory interests toward the site, and that causes uh, some dissonances, uh, which I'd like to describe. So uh, let's start from this general uh, presentation on uh, some trend trends in tourism. Um, actually, I, I really, um, uh, I, I strongly feel, and uh, I would like to highlight that uh, tourism is not just simply uh, organizing travels for people. Uh, tourism industry is experience interest industry. We actually don't sell products as products, something uh, that we can touch, we can buy, even though that we can sell uh, souvenirs or we can explore museums where there are some particular material objects. But this is about experiencing life. And therefore, I think that introduction and connection with existential tourism, to which I would like to uh, link as well later on, uh, is very, very important that uh, tourism, this is part of our life, modern life, but this is about uh, helping people to experience some novelty. And uh, this is also kind of responsibility. What kind of experience are we going uh, to help to, help to uh, stimulate um, the visitors to feel? Uh, and there are three general trends um, in uh, recent tourism management, which is 3E. And this is education, entertainment, and excitement. These issues are connected, so we do some educational work. Uh, we would like to uh, help people uh, do some intellectual work during their travels. They, people would like to uh, be more knowledgeable by their travels, but it means that it should be in a proper surrounding circumstances that support uh, that process of the education. Therefore, we have to give them kind of entertainment. And this is very simple and it has its roots in Aristotle's teaching that it's better to proceed knowledge when we uh, experience it emotionally positively. So we have some fun with that. And this is a huge question. Um, starting from the kindergartens, how to teach children, students, everybody, if we take it in consideration as lifelong process, um, how to teach, to give fun, to entertain people. And it can go within excitement. So if we are moved, if we are touched, if we engage emotionally in the experience, then we acknowledge better, in a better mood. Um, and that 
uh, goes uh, that that leads us to the next um, aspect, uh, which is another of three E, as as you can see, which are emotions, embodiment, and engagement. Uh, there is no engagement without uh, emotional uh, emo emotions that can be attracted uh, by by the tour guide or, generally speaking, by those who organize the tours. And it goes along with uh, the fact that, that we per perceived word uh, multisensorial, uh, in a multisensorial way. So this is not about gazing, simply gazing. There is a very famous book of um, John Airy, uh, The Tourist Gaze, when he, where he criticizes uh, tourist industry uh, on the basis on the fact that tourists just gaze upon something and that experience uh, is not engaging them. But uh, it, is, uh, it has been criticized uh, for, for many years that people are really not only gazing. Of course, there are very many people who just want to tick highlight must-see places, and this is kind of collection of places, of sites for them. But there are more and more people, as Sergei said, who are trying to experience some novelty, and this is because of this existential potential that they want to transform their lives, that they want to go beyond some horizon, they want to um, cross some boundaries uh, of their emotions, of their bodies, uh, to find um, this new truth about themselves as well. And it, it is very important, especially in such places and the Cherno in, in, as uh, this says, as um, Chernobyl exclusion zone, because this specific sphere surroundings uh, connected with radiation that we cannot see actually, we cannot touch, but we know the risk connected with that is strongly embodied in tourist experience. Therefore, we count radiation, we try to gaze at it somehow and feel it, even though that is impossible uh, somehow without dosimeters, for example. So um, this uh, also intrigues you and uh, leads you to use some performative strategies um, with tourists. So as they don't simply gaze which doesn't give them any knowledge and any experience of the place, but you try to perform uh, this interpretation with them. So we can treat both guides and visitors as actors who are playing and trying to play within some scenario that is already prepared, but this is always um, a, a novelty for people because even if we have one scenario, like basing on one route, there are still different actors who are coming from various countries with di different backgrounds. Well, we can say that this is kind of backpack that we have of our previous experiences, our personality, ethnicity, um, uh, age, gender, etc. So each time that guides meets with a group or a simply individual tourist, he meets with new responsibility, with new situation that when, when he or she needs to uh, not only repeat uh, this prepared material, but have to perform it in order to satisfy needs um, of visitors. And this is the uh, next level, which is personalization. Fit is free and independent travel, because more and more, this is a huge challenge, of course, for, to do it repeatedly, because like, I'm, uh, I'm aware that you we are guiding um, every day or every second day or every week, that doesn't matter, um, at the same site. It can be boring. Like, I, I can imagine that even if you are in Chernobyl exclusion zone, you can get bored <laughs> or you can get fed up with repeating all that stuff all that time. But still, this is a huge challenge to do it in such a mood that uh, people will get intrigued uh, by that. And the last issue is slow tourism, which can be linked 
somehow referred to this existential tourism, that uh, people look for some uh, new experiences that would be totally different from their ordinarity, from their uh, daily practice, daily routine. So this concept of getting slow, not only in food, but also in travel. So we can stop and we can just admire. We don't collect sites uh, as collection exhibitions in museums. We just prefer to go somewhere and have a look and feel it and experience for two, three, four days, even if we can do it in two hours. So this is also a new challenge for tourism industry. And I think that all these um, issues find some, uh, can, can be found uh, in the Chernobyl zones uh, tourism and are very general framework to understand it better. Uh, so how to uh, compare it, uh, how, to, how to link it to uh, the art of guiding as, um, as, a, as I titled uh, this presentation? Because I really uh, feel very strongly, I'm very strongly convinced that guiding is an art. This is not just simply a job. This is not about responsibility, but this is an art. And uh, you can be a great performer in, in that. Uh, as long as you want to uh, learn all the time new stuff and acknowledge uh, that this kind of self-development all the time. So here you've got the definition of, of being a guide and the moment that I would like to draw your attention uh, to focus more um, on that uh, definition, which is very obvious, is the fact that uh, tour guides um, are interpreters. Uh, this is the official definition of European Commu Commu Committee for Standardization. So everything is standardized, as you know, in the European Union. Um, even cucumbers that should have proper length and shape. Um, so, um, but the, the, the issue here is that it is both cultural and natural heritage. Uh, the def definition of heritage has been changing for decades starting from the moment in the 50s after the Second World War where you, when UNESCO decided that there should be a list of sites that uh, are very important for humanity and we should protect it and develop it. And in that moment, uh, heritage uh, was defined as material objects, architecture. But it has changed uh, because there was nature included in the definition of heritage, even though that the very general definition of culture is something that is not nature. But now we know that there are no spaces in, within globe um, on Earth that are not touched by uh, people, that there is natural landscape, but with this human factor everywhere, even in Antarctic, wherever, there is some impact of uh, human beings on the natural landscape. Therefore, we can treat it also as cultural landscape because people interfere with the nature and therefore we can treat nature as our heritage, our responsibility. We feel attached to some sites that are, even though some mountains, for example, that has very strong symbolical meaning for our ethnicity, for example. Like, I don't know, um, uh, Uluru Mountain in Australia. You know, so many uh, issues, dissonances connected with visiting Uluru Mountains because of Aboriginal community and the fact that this is a very spiritual place for them, while for others it's just site for trekking. So uh, this natural aspect of heritage is also a very important frame for understanding the Chernobyl zone, which is the natural uh, space as well. This is not only post-disaster site, but this is place where nature conquered it uh, back and there are very many people who go there because of this natural factor in order to see how it looks um, um, not only because industrial ruins and uh, urbex uh, issues but also to feel that wildlife um, that has developed there and 
And therefore, uh, it is important for guides to acknowledge also that factor. And um, the, uh, one, one other uh, aspect is bo in bold here, uh, that uh, being a guide is often, not always, um, recognized by appropriate authority. And this is the moment that I would like also to uh, highlight that um, there is a general question whether we should certify tour guides or not and how we should do it. Should there be any official trainings for them? Should there be authorities like administrative authorities who could say that after doing some training, passing exam, you can be a licensed guide or we can just leave it free for everybody who would like to uh, do this job. I am convinced that there should be kind of assessment for uh, knowledge, skills and um, other competences that the guides have because of this responsibility uh, that is um, on their backs. Like not everybody uh, can be a guide and feels it as this art or mission. Uh, here what I gave you are the six principles of interpretation which are taken from uh, the very, very important book, the very seminal monograph uh, who really which really changed the approach toward guiding. Uh, it, has, it was published in the 50s, uh, 57 if I properly remember. Um, and uh, this book was uh, written by Freeman Tilden who worked for many, many years uh, for the national park, um, one of the national parks in the United States. And uh, in, in his book, um, of course, basing on that very special perspective of natural landscape and interpretation doing within uh, that framework, he said that um, firstly, guides are important <laughs> in that experience. Secondly, uh, that uh, they are not doing a job of tour leading, organizing, managing, uh, being responsible for health and safety of tourists, but they are doing this important job of um, interpretation. And um, he wrote this philosophy of interpretation which became um, fundamental um, for various research done later on and very practical one because this is not only theory but I said uh, but um, it, it is set also as practical guidebook for uh, for guides and he defines interpretation as educational activity which aims to reveal meanings and relationships through the use of original objects authentic one this is one of the uh, very important also um, terms used by anthropologists to study tourism, like this question of authenticity, what we can consider as authentic and why people pay such attention to authenticity in their experience, by first-hand experience and illustrative media rather than simply communicate factual information. So this is not a lecture, <laughs> this is kind of um, what, uh, what guides should do, this is something of revelation, so showing new meanings, and this is this is exceptional, I think, uh, because uh, to reveal something is uh, to feel strongly attached to that, to get this truth uh, by yourself, and to open for that truth for yourself. Firstly, if you want to reveal something uh, for the other, so if you want to show something and explain, it, it is something that you need to understand firstly. Because it's impossible to explain something properly if you don't understand it um, first. And um, well, uh, let's move to the second uh, part which is uh, who should be a guide or what are the functions of this ideal guide. Um, I wanted to start with some, well, terms uh, that are very often used to describe um, uh, values, some skills um, that uh, a guide should possess. Um, 
So just look at this night, please. And would you like to share your personal subjective um, attitude toward that? And tell me which of them to you, uh, how do you feel are more or less important? So which of these features a guide should possess to be this ideal guide? Any ideas? I mean, th there are no better or worse answers. I just want to uh, know what is your personal perspective on that. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yes. You composed it on a slide on purpose, only in sense of humor, not talk. No, 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 no. This is the, 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 there is no purposes, <laughs> suggestions. No, <laughs> just. No, because I totally agree with this. Okay. <laughs> So sense of humor as the, as, the, as the leading feature. Others, which of them you would treat as more or less important? Like just share your experience maybe, which of them are more important for you personally in your work? Enthusiasm, mm -hmm. okay. Any other, Sergey, for you. You know, I, I cannot. I, you can, yes, everybody can. Here, everybody can. <laughs> Everything is really Everything is important, really but. Important. Mm -hmm. no, I, I cannot say that something is outstanding. But, mm -hmm. Well, perhaps I would put uh, enthusiasm uh, at the top as well. Mm -hmm. Though, you know, the issue of personal integrity and ethics, of course, is some kind of at the background. Mm -hmm. so. Yes, personal. Uh, I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. Uh, depending on which side we are, yeah? <laughs> for the survival of the tour guide, yeah. uh, probably flexibility mm -hmm. is the most uh, dangerous thing. Mm -hmm. Because when I'm flexible, yeah, I have to change myself for every situation to show up because this comforts for me. Yes. Yeah? But I can comfort my group. Yeah. Yeah. But from the point of view of the Tourists, it's good, people. yeah. <laughs> because mm -hmm. it signals about the readiness mm -hmm. of the guys to meet their uh, needs. Yeah. Well, I think we could focus on each of them and discuss that these features in some some moments are more or less uh, important that like we cannot imagine uh, spending the time with not enthusiastic guides but there are sometimes two enthusiastic guides as well so um, we can put it also in kind of spectrum and therefore i didn't want to structure it here saying like at the first there should be something and the tenth position would be to something just to think about this mixture in flexible way <laughs> that should um, somehow refer to each other and they are just components of this integrity like of, of each uh, tour guide where each of these features in a particular moment should be or can be more important uh, because of some circumstances. Okay. So, uh, but there are a few functions that we are all, we, we can agree that uh, each guide has, has to uh, fulfill uh, some roles that uh, he or she has to play. So first of it is a leader. And in traditional understanding, a leader is somebody who controls a group and convenes a group to do what the guide wants to do. So uh, in that traditional, understanding traditional definition um, it is somebody who in very um, uh, decisive uh, way um, organizes um, the tour but there is the notion of which is called new leadership which is actually connected with um, interpretation process because uh, it is defined as creating the right environment uh, to satisfy both company goals and tourist needs. So here there is no one path, one, no one rule um, uh, that everybody should follow, but there are different needs and the guides should try at least 
uh, to satisfy them. And here, th th this is also important that the goals of tourists not always goes within the goals of company or other other stakeholders like the local community, etc., etc. So this is also very important that this leadership ha ha means that you need to take into consideration these various interests that might be contradictory. In practice, how does it look? So there is very practical instrumental component of taking responsibility for navigating, providing special access, maintaining control. And I think that in, when we talk about the Chernobyl exclusion zone, it's particularly important. Uh, we just uh, discussed the risks of uh, visiting the zone. It's not only connected uh, with radiation. And this is something that people are not aware of. Like, they are aware um, on the basis of their previous experience, on, or which is called tourist imaginaries, uh, that they can like, they know that they won't do it, but they uh, imagine that there are some strange creatures or they played stalkers and imagine that radioactive sphere as dangerous, but they don't pay attention to the risk connected with ruinization of Pripyat or wildlife that sometimes it is not, um, uh, that it might be risky even to feed dogs. Okay, like, of course, Tarzan looks very friendly, but still, if you don't behave properly because you are drunk, uh, because you are a British tourist uh, <laughs> participating in stuck party, um, of course, this is generalization, still that friendly dog can become your enemy that uh, makes some risk uh, even to your health. And each tour guide should acknowledge that fact and should be prepared for that. Uh, issue. That means also some decisions that are made that no, not always satisfy tourists, like uh, going further if they still want to take some photos, but if you want to fulfill the program, which is your duty, you need to proceed, etc., etc. Everybody knows that this practical issue is crucial, very important, and sometimes very difficult. But there is also a social component, and especially if you work with uh, if we work uh, with uh, foreigners who are coming from different countries with different needs, it is difficult to fulfill this uh, role, which is like um, integrating the group uh, to create this proper atmosphere of community, of so socialization. Um, this is something sometimes about tension management, uh, where these needs are contradictory and there are division of mini groups within your groups and you need to combine them somehow. Um, entertain, but also keeping good mood and morale, etc. And this is also something that I would like to uh, make a, a, a small uh, um, comment on the ethics, because this is something that we very often forget and I'm, uh, I'm aware and I feel that in, uh, in the Polish context, uh, when we talk about tour guiding in Poland, this ethical um, uh, um, fundament is, um, basis is sometimes that we lack in our training, that ethical responsibility of guide is something very crucial and this is not only meaning keeping good mood of tourists, but also responsibility for the moral ethical behavior, and especially in sites with, with dissonant heritage, uh, where we have such uh, powerful emotions connected with uh, victims, uh, with um, pain, with death, um, somehow combining entertaining and keeping good mood with interpretation of this painful, traumatic experiences is exceptionally difficult. And this is a huge challenge for guides uh, working in Auschwitz-Birkenau, but also here. Uh, I mean, the, this comparison always comes to, mind, to my mind. And even though that I do understand different space, but I still think that this responsibility is not less huge. So um, the question that we might ask ourselves, to what extent uh, a good tour guide uh, 
when we take into consideration his or her leadership should be an autocrat. So um, can we uh, use these democratic rules in our, working, in our work with group or we should particularly know what to do and somehow control? Uh, this is just a question to consider. Uh, a teacher or interpreter. So, uh, oh, sorry, uh, I've already um, started to talk about it. So this is not only about education on rules and regulations within zone or in general uh, teaching. This is about uh, awaiting people's curiosity. And um, we can do it through these um, uh, techniques or strategies uh, which engage people. I will talk more about it uh, in a few minutes. Uh, which uh, gives them this participatory uh, experience. And this is um, using this emotional trigger in the right moment, in the right moment, where this interpretation will mean really a revelation for tourists. So finding a way, a path to some hidden truth that they really even cannot imagine that there is something beyond this curtain. But because we are uh, knowledgeable guides and skillful guides, we know what is behind curtain and we can just show them this way to uh, have a glimpse um, behind. Not, not, not to open it uh, only for them, but also just to help them be more mobile in their uh, experiences. So uh, I think the six principles are very, very useful when we talk <coughs> about uh, being a guide as a teacher, as an interpreter. The next issue, uh, which is also crucial uh, in the Chernobyl zone, in my opinion, zone, in my opinion, is being an ambassador. And this is a question whether a guide always should present a place in a favorable way. So how ca should we shape our narr narration um, to um, fill the needs of tourists, but also some authorities? And this is the question, the, the, the issue that opens questions on um, uh, policy towards history, uh, generally speaking, uh, administrative issues that somehow shape your work and you can agree or not with them, but still you have to <laughs> acknowledge that they exist and you have to go within that rules. And this is sometimes very challenging um, to be authentic for your tourists, even though that you work in not very uh, easy surroundings. So um, acknowledging it and somehow openness to tourists is also a basis for good interpretation. Uh, and you as guides work as this public relations representative. So this is kind of mediation of some public official narratives, your personal attitudes. Uh, to what extent can we be subjective in our um, explanations or not? So this is also a question to consider and to develop uh, further in discussion. And the last one, but not least, that's for sure, is being a host. So this fundamental division uh, for between hosts and guests. Hosts are those who are from here and offers the site for visitors. Visitors are our guests. And of course, we don't use that frame only for uh, marketing reasons that you are not paying us money, we are not working for you, and like just pretend that we are very hospitable for you and you will be our guest. This is not true. I think that um, a guide, really, a good guide, really feels as a host, as, a, uh, as somebody who wants to share something, not only sell something, but also share something, which is even invaluable. I mean, you cannot really pay for experiencing this, uh, revealing the truth. This, this, this is impossible. And so if we treat guides as 
hosts, then we can go to higher level of uh, interpretation um, of who we are and what we do. And um, there is particular tradition of interpreting tour leading or tour guiding as cultural mediation. Uh, if we work in uh, with foreigners uh, in multicultural environment, we uh, we know that this is exceptionally important to uh, to be this broker that we are aware of the cultural differences, uh, not only referring to language, but also uh, but but this backpack of culture that uh, each of us has and it's inseparable, inseparable with uh, us. And so that also is uh, like the question, uh, to what extent, for example, our narrative should be homogeneous or heterogeneous? So um, if, should, should we talk in more universal level in order everybody can understand uh, with their knowledge what we are talking about? or we should focus on some aspects, and this is the inter interpretation, that would reveal some uh, issues that people can maybe not understand properly, but they will just can develop further uh, by themselves. And this is a question, for example, uh, of um, the, the consequences of uh, Chernobyl's disaster. Okay, so how can we interpret it? Um, because this is not simply radiation. There are very many aspects um, of it that should be taken into consideration. But if we think about the different cultures, like I, if we got in group Asian people, American people, French people, uh, Poles, uh, I, I don't know, whatever we want to, and their language skills are also sometimes very basic, it is very hard to go deeper and to make very, very uh, detailed interpretation still if we need to proceed and follow this route. So this is a huge, huge challenge. And some guides, guiding strategies, they, I think, are uh, practiced uh, by, uh, by tour guides uh, of those who I could observe or I just had impression uh, on the basis of experiences of others um, whom I interviewed. So um, these are very general rules and this, uh, the, we can attach them not only to tour guiding in the Chernobyl exclusion zone and I, I really don't want to make a lecture on that. Like these are issues that I would like to reconsider with you whether you agree or not with that uh, as practitioners, as professionals. So uh, for sure that in each uh, tour guide uh, practice, we can see that this is combination of tour companies' politics. This is obvious. That each tour company has its own politic, even if it's not reflected or auto-reflected, but still it is. Personality of the guide, visitors' wishes, and circumstances of the tour. There are differences between guiding in the middle of June and right now, and this is also something obvious, which means that we have to tailor the tour. Uh, very, very of the strategy that I very of well, I observed um, in my research is shortening the distance with tourists, and this is this role of being host and um, also um, paying attention to the emotions of tourists. Um, so as if we not only pretend to be friendly, but we are friendly to people, they open also uh, to us and they speak openly about their needs so as we can satisfy them. Like if we see that there is some wall between a guide and tourists, there will be no dialogue between, there will be no revelation, there will be no satisfying interpretation between them. So this shortening distance is sometimes very crucial, at the beginning at least. Uh, this multi-sensuality about which I've already talked, uh, of exploration, engaging with space, this is extremely important technique. I mean, it is something that uh, we don't observe m much in museums, for example, although it also happens. But in such 
very particular space as Pripyat or Chernobyl or generally speaking the Chernobyl exclusion zone is, this engaging techniques um, comes to awareness as crucial. Uh, some didactic tools and games that you use like visual materials comparing um, how it used to be in the past and now which opens also um, some new horizons of interpretation because really it's difficult to imagine how this Pripyat city for example looked like in the, in the past especially if people got, come from Western Europe or Asia and they didn't really had that experience of living in socialist country so for them even at that stage at that moment it is difficult to understand it to imagine it while uh, what if you if we need to uh, show the process of ruinization or consequences of the disaster this is uh, the next stage of interpretation and personalization of the narrative and this is something that I focus on mostly which is find, finding this reference to our personal experiences subjective memory um, which is um, coming to truth as a guide, as a host who shares authentic experiences uh, of him or her as a human being. And this moment of opening um, for that um, truth about yourself uh, is very moving uh, for, um, uh, for people. And I could observe during my research that in, in that moment that uh, guides started to talk about some personal experiences connected with the disaster or the consequences of it were crucial for visitors, for tourists participating in the tour. And it was something that, like, that was like this moment that you see the group that are, that people stop to take photos and starts to listen to the guides. And there, therefore, in my research, in the title of it, there is guiding and witnessing. I mean, like you are witnesses to something that happened in the past, but is happening still, because this is not something that is closed for, uh, for the future. I mean, like we, we need to rework our connection with um, the disaster as we have to work our connection to the Second World War or something that happened even before because it creates our identity and it is impossible not to refer to that. Therefore, I think that this, the, the most in, authentic moments of um, excursions are these moments where uh, guide starts not only use these manuals and some information that is widespread and uh, people can read it in uh, Wikipedia even, uh, but this moments of revelation of um, this personal um, experiences. So um, to sum up, um, I like this is the proposal of what uh, of how I interpret <laughs> tour guiding in the Chernobyl exclusion zone on different levels. I mean, these are functions, these are roles that are combined um, by guides during uh, their work. So, and this is referred to the site because there is no guiding. Um, this, this, this is something that we cannot separate from the site as site, as heritage site. So um, if we treat zone as site of memory, uh, we can say that guide is an, an error. So um, even though that this is abundant site, that this is hairless heritage, heritage without earth, without people who live there, uh, we've got a guide who starts to be somebody who um, inherited that site. And this is responsibility like a responsibility for very material uh, matter of Pripyat and its destroy, uh, destruction by tourists who, for example, make graffiti or other stalkers, whatever. Uh, so guides feel responsible for architecture, but also responsible for interpretation. Therefore, we can treat guides as those who inherited uh, that site, even if they didn't live there before. 
uh, if we treat as uh, the site as remembrance ob objects, so there are monuments that <laughs> show us officially some commemorations uh, of that site, we can um, observe that guide works or plays a role of an expert who do this interpretation but refers to some information that are shared are objective and um, this authentic experience means, means not only subjective authenticity but also objective authenticity that the guide has knowledge on the uh, facts from the past, so knows the numbers, knows uh, some uh, documents. So this is about knowledge. Uh, guide should be knowledgeable, should be an expert of the site, not only somebody who entertains group. Then, uh, acumen. So this is the notion taken from uh, the um, ancient times. Uh, acumen is a land, a landscape or place, site, uh, where, to which we feel attached to, uh, where community lives and we feel uh, within that safety. So uh, if we treat uh, the Chernobyl exclusion zone as, as home, let's say because acumen we can, we can compare to home, to, to feeling um, to that feeling to that atma attachment of being responsible for because this is connected with our identity. So here we can interpret the role of guide as a host. Then something that links uh, directly with uh, the notion of uh, uh, existential tourism because uh, that mode of existential uh, tourists is taken from Eric's Cohen topology. Uh, where he writes about spaces of hierophany in tourism environment. I know that this is kind of exaggeration to uh, talk about guides as a priest, but this is about being that man or woman or person who reveals the truth. And it is connected with kind of um, sacrum because of the values, because of the values that are hidden and uh, this is connected with some rituals always, even if we don't talk it, uh, if we don't treat it in religious uh, way, uh, in, in religious manner, still I think that everybody knows uh, what I want to say, that this is kind of um, very special, uh, very special um, practice that reveals truth um, and opens for some values that are hidden. And the last one, which is also obvious, that place of entertainment that guides should work as an animator to give some space also for positive <laughs> engagement, not only talking about very serious matters. Conclusions. So uh, this is the final. Slide. Um, there are different strategies of guiding and they also are connected with some tensions so to guarantee educational value but on the other, ha on, on the other hand to ensure some homogeneity of uh, the presentation of the issues um, but also this heterogeneity of the local context which is very very particular here. Um, uh, the consequences, the memory of disaster and consequences of it are somehow proceed through the uh, prism of guide's personal relationship with the zone and each guide has its own uh, personal relationship and even if it's not revealed each time, still it is and the fundamental element of this relationship is, as I said, is I observe it kind of circle of interpretation and also this performativity which comes from the work with different people uh, in changing environments. So uh, this, is, this is always very, very flexible and it changes all the time so it needs from you kind of openness uh, for new experiences. And finally, just to make it more positive, I really think that the um, like, role of guide in the Chernobyl exclusion zone is not only crucial, but also is something that um, can be referred to Mark Twain's um, 
idealistic point of view. Uh, but still, it happens. Not always maybe in tourism, because tourists are regarded to be barbarians nowadays. And it is also true about mass tourism. But it is a chance, uh, it is a great challenge for changing world. And these are maybe very, very general, ge huge generalizations, but I feel that tourism uh, is something very, very posi positive and it opens um, uh, ourselves for a dialogue with other people and change for change for better. Okay, thank you so much. And now we can discuss it. <laughs> Certainly, thank you, Magdalena, for, for this uh, truly impressive presentation in many aspects, eye-opening uh, presentation. You know? and, uh, I can understand why uh, rather my famous universities of Rochester, of, oh, uh, of Milan, of Sofia, and University, Please. European University of Vienna uh, have, cho uh, have chosen uh, Magdalena as the visiting professor to uh, to deliver lecture for their students. So we are very much privileged and many thanks uh, really for, um, you, you know, I, I'm pretty sure anyone in this whole audience uh, uh, had developed uh, uh, many important, uh, not even thoughts, but trains of thoughts, I would say. So you are welcome, please, if you have, if you have any questions, uh, you are welcome to ask. If you need uh, translation, I will be greatly translate and uh, Magdalena understands uh, Russian. Yes. So. I can okay, try. Please, 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 Madre, you can criticize as well. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, I don't uh, know any studies like that. I can search for it because it's extremely interesting uh, what you are talking about. Uh, you mean that like a person is uh, working for one place yeah. for many, many years one and how does it... One of the options yeah. uh, for the tour guide might be in yeah. the yeah, yeah. scheme was that tour guides might be uh, a priest. Yes. And it leads me to the thought that in some circumstances the tour guide might become a game of school. Yeah. Yeah. After years. Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So and my point is whether any, mm -hmm. any research. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I will seek for it. <laughs> um, I mean like the, there are I think there is some niche uh, in research uh, when we uh, when we think about guiding, and uh, there are no so many studies on tour guiding. There are few of them, and I know some of them. There, like this per uh, this anthropological uh, perspective is very very strong. Uh, like Noel Salazar's, for example, studies very very interesting, but it's more oriented into the interpretation processes as well. Uh, but this, um, yes, yeah, dem demographic issue, I would say, <laughs> lifelong term study would be exceptionally interesting. So I will, I will try to find something on that uh, or ask others, maybe they know it because like, you know, sometimes there is some article paper on something and you just don't have access to it because you didn't try to think about it. But this is something that I'm, also keen on finding. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Interesting. You, you know, my, my feeling is uh, that uh, in the topic of uh, connection uh, of, uh, of, the, of the guides uh, to the site, uh, Chernobyl will be again a pioneer in site. Uh, yeah. 
start this research. And moreover, I have to tell you that it's quite interesting that similar ideas arrive uh, um, appear simultaneously in totally different hairs. Uh, next Sunday, 17th of February, uh, we will have a tour to the Chernobyl Zoo with a crew of uh, Dutch uh, New Netherlands uh, TV uh, crew. Mm -hmm. They will film, uh, they will make a, a documentary film about the guides, I emphasize, about the guides which lead the tours uh, to the uh, um, traumatic sites. Mm -hmm. uh, Chernobyl naturally is number one. Then there will be the site of uh, earthquake in uh, Italy. Mm -hmm. And the third site is uh, Damascus, Syria. Mm -hmm. you know, and so they will uh, film uh, uh, tour, Chernobyl tours uh, trip mm -hmm. uh, with me and with, uh, with the former worker of the um, Chernobyl nuclear power plant, Alexei Breus, uh, to, to the Chernobyl zone. You know, and mm -hmm. It will be a documentary and uh, of course it will be a TV program. You know, and they started like two years ago, and I feel that it will be something uh, above, you know, average level of reporting. Mm -hmm. uh, because they are, they are very you know, fundamental, you know, and, and very clever, very intrigued minded guys, uh, not prejudiced, which, mm -hmm. which is very important. Yeah, I, I think that if, if I may comment on no, what no, you no, said, no, no, no. it's, <laughs> uh, it's uh, very interesting to uh, find this uh, more general framework for situ uh, situating uh, the Chernobyl, uh, Chernobyl's tourism within. So, as we already talked uh, uh, earlier, this is not dark tourism, this is not tourism of well, death. Only the, the, the definition, the yes, and interpretation, so we can call it also post-apocalyptic or post-disaster tourism. And this is not like the issue, the main issue, but this is, uh, this is the issue that we can find different disasters and catastrophes all around the world. And it doesn't mean that it, can, it, it is natural catastrophe, it can be a terrorist attack. And with this site, there is particular memory work connected, we work with traumatic experiences. And tourism can stimulate that work and can, can help to overcome trauma. As in Grand Zero, it's happening, as it's happening in Holocaust stories, as it's happening here. So not only education, but also experiencing and confronting with traumatic experiences in order to go further, in order, in order to move on uh, with that very difficult past. Yeah. We, we will you know, keep harmony between uh, thematic organi organi organization, yes. relevance, um, also entertainment. As for how do you think, who's the best, what's the best the phenomenon to choose to develop entertainment in this, in this case? Because I think it's a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. Because if we miss entertainment, we receive only lecture or some scientific presentation. Mm -hmm. So, how do you think? What's the best way to okay. develop this E? Okay. Well, right. actually. I don't define entertainment as simply fun <laughs> and <laughs> not only going um, to amusement park <laughs> so we can have entertainment there. Although I, I saw some project on uh, like reconstruction of amusement park, like, this is like a, a kind of a intellectual project only to, uh, of revitalization of amusement park to open it for visitors. But I don't know what is your <laughs> perspective on that. But um, entertainment um, for me means engagement. So a part, like um, aspects of entertaining uh, uh, can be experienced by visitors while a tour guide, for example, engage them in a kind of a game. So you can, uh, this is um, like during one of the tours, oh, I think with Chernobyl tour, uh, the guide um, proposed a game that uh, near the Duga radar um, uh, that you can just think about yourself what would, what would you do if you have just two minutes of your life 
as those workers at Duga uh, Radar had in mind during their work. So they were prepared for that moment that it can be some um, moment of starting Cold War when, when they have just two minutes of, of life on. And it was kind of a game performance for tourists. What would they do? And um, this engagement was kind of entertaining. Of course, there were very funny answers like, I would have sex because that would be the last moment in my life to have some pleasure. Uh, or I would drink uh, two liters of vodka not to be conscious in the moment <laughs> of my death. So it was like a funny moment because the comments were funny. Uh, but still this entertaining process went by. Uh, and thanks to it, uh, the guide could show the context uh, in different way, not only lecture. So there was a situ there was a possibility that Cold War would start, etc., etc. But through that engagement and kind of performance, uh, people uh, could really feel what that meant in that uh, particular time, especially for young people who really did didn't have the experience of living in Cold War and they don't feel the risk and dangerous connected with that. It was something very touchy. Uh, so I mean that entertainment, oh, just I heard uh, like the comment of <laughs> one of the guides that Tarzan uh, dog is our natural entertaining part, entertainment. So like feeding dogs or taking pictures with them, this is like this, the, the moments of having some fun and pleasure and not thinking about the serious aspects all the time or taking food porns uh, in the canteen. Also, shall we eat this radioactive uh, meat or not? Or this is so big portion that it's for sure it is radioactive, etc., etc. So this funny comment somehow helps us to um, experience that um, that situation and work with that because it's somehow sometimes very difficult. Like I know there are, I know guides who work in Auschwitz Birkenau and because of their personal connections with Holocaust, uh, they even um, give some anecdotes or they make jokes on on Jewish people and Holocaust, but. It can be possible only for those who, <laughs> who are somehow, um, you know, witnesses. Uh, while for, for others, it could be offensive. Uh, so uh, this, this entertaining process uh, needs this very, very huge ethics uh, connected. And if you are ethical within that, then you can entertain your group while educating them. Yeah, it's a very good question. And it's a great thing. question. Yeah, it's great it's question and a great answer I have to uh, tell. You, you know, I think the, like to add a, a couple of sentences, you know, it is, uh, usually when we say entertainment, we, uh, it is reduced to pure fun, mm -hmm. in, you know, uh, ordinary speech. But generally speaking, uh, let's say a, a movie, a serious movie drama, also formally falls uh, uh, into the category of entertainment. Correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. So basically, ent entertainment in more broad sense means uh, making uh, recipients, audience, to live through emotion, mm -hmm. through emotion, through okay. uh, authentic emotion. And <laughs> that matter, you cannot keep uh, the audience uh, on negative emotions uh, just even one hour, let's say. It's psychologically impossible. And so it's necessary to engage the, yes. the whole uh, scale of emotion, the whole spectrum of emotions, uh, to properly deliver you know, the main message and everything. And speaking of, of the humor, of the anecdotes, you know, I studied uh, psychology, human psychology, studying uh, the health of the Chernobyl activities. I studied uh, how human beings survive in extreme and unusual environments. You know, and uh, it is well, already well known for professionals that uh, the feeling of humor is one of the means of survival. Mm -hmm. You know, and it is not by chance that I call my book the Chernobyl comedy, because uh, it is true uh, during the mitigation processes, ex 
exactly because it was quite, quite hard. People need, uh, need, needed, you know, this uh, psychological rest, you know, and so there were plenty of humor, and humor was highly respected and in high demand. So it's hu humor is a natural response for mortal danger mm -hmm. for, for, uh, and for hard circumstances. You know, and so it's it's just necessary how uh, to um, to introduce it ethically into uh, yes. uh, guides narrations. I mean, being a legislator myself, you know, I can make, make, uh, make rather rough jokes, uh, you know, on, on the trip. But it would it uh, it would be appropriate for the guides of a younger generation. You know, they need uh, you know to shape it differently. Okay, yeah, so this is more encouragement. This is more encouragement with a sense of humor. Yes. Yeah. It's not a pure entertainment at all. It's encouragement. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. A kind of friendship. Yeah. Um, you know, feelings of friendship. Being yeah. friends, not a man cast. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. Please, please, Yara. And uh, another question. Uh, how do you think what the most interesting uh, program will be? Uh, for foreigners, for example, not uh, seen, uh, I think about topic. Uh, I mean, topic, top so, thematic how can tour? The interpretive program for foreigners. In the Chernobyl exclusion zone? Uh, yes. How do you think? What? Hmm. <laughs> Well, you, you ask me, it's a it's great question, but very, very difficult uh, to answer um, because, uh, I mean, there, there are different foreigners and uh, uh, that's what I, that's what I told you about, that's why I told you about this tailored tours, uh, that the specific needs should be fulfilled. Um, if I, if I think about, generally speaking, about people who are in their mid-20s or 30s, and according to my knowledge, this is uh, most of the people who are coming to, uh, yeah. to the exclusion zone, like in yeah, 30, yeah. 35. Um, well, this, this, this question of uh, urbex uh, tourism and... Um, well, I would refer it to this uh, concept of um, tourism imaginaries, which are uh, fed by uh, media. So when we uh, refer it to the uh, environment of uh, internet and virtual uh, reality, I observe that this, there is very, very big stress, very big highlight and focus on um, different media productions as stalkers computer game. This is something that stimulated uh, yeah. also uh, the popularity of uh, Chernobyl tourism. So there are very many people who are really interested in comparison between virtual Chernobyl, let's say virtual Chernobyl, and the real one. So they are uh, particularly interested in Chernobyl to compare these experiences of virtuality. It can be video game uh, stalker or it can be, there is interesting um, uh, virtual uh, reality project made by Polish company where you can go to, to the Chernobyl with the special glasses and you can experience it virtually. But there are people who still want to feel it physically and they go to Chernobyl because of that physical, embodied experience. So I, I think that this uh, thematic tour can be connected with this virtual perspective on Chernobyl and comparison with some imaginaries connected with that. And it has very strong educational potential as well, uh, like the demythologization of the site, which as I said, like people, just, just today my, my mom uh, called me and like she's so stressed that I'm doing that research and every time I'm in Kiev she asks me, how many times are we going through the Chernobyl exclusion zone, please don't touch anything, please don't do any, don't drink water, etc, etc. So even though that I explained her, to her so many times that there is no danger, as there are no zombies, etc., this myth of the Chernobyl zone is very, very strong. And it is still recreated by virtual media, 
And I think it, it could be a great educational program just to base on that imaginaries and try to trace them uh, during physical tour in Chernobyl. That's what I would do. <laughs> I know, maybe Sergei has some, many, <laughs> some other concepts. <laughs> no, 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 just a, a small comment. The, uh, I wouldn't call it a problem, but the issue with the Chernobyl Dome is, uh, with the Chernobyl Dome heritage, is that it is a multi-faceted, multi-dimensional, mm -hmm. uh, multi-topical, you know, multi-semantic yes. uh, uh, issue. You know, and you cannot fit, uh, fit uh, the whole Chernobyl into one trip. And because of this, we in Chernobyl uh, tour uh, design different tours. Because, yeah. For example, when there was a way of interest from the players, uh, from the gamers of this uh, uh, video game, you know, we designed special tour for them, but uh, when we visited the sites which were very uh, truthfully depicted in the game, because the developers of the game, they first went to the dome, they featured many locations. And they uh, truthfully reproduced them uh, in, uh, into the, the, uh, uh, in the game, you know. And so we included those, uh, you know, places of huge interest for those mm -hmm. uh, gamers, you know. But uh, using it uh, as a kind of hook, uh, which made the people to visit the zoo, we showed them, you know, the main uh, uh, location, we delivered to them the main ideas which we uh, consider that each post Chernobyl uh, Homo sapiens should know, you know. So we have a certain company policy about what should be uh, introduced, what should we teach about, you know. And so there were you know, different groups, we, we opened the table to different aspects. We had industrial tools for the Chernobyl mm -hmm. tool, but groups of professionals, of students, you know, they study, you know, technical issues. We have uh, groups for ecologists, environmentalists, where we focus mostly you know, on, on, on those issues. But of course, we always include you know, the main, uh, several, but very important ideas and locations which should everyone see. You know? So we, we should not uh, limit ourselves just to one, uh, one, one day overview to, to the Chernobyl Zone. Mm -hmm. Yes, but I, I think about the situation that I, I don't uh, want to Chernobyl will be like a, a this game, day, like. game game for people for foreigners people they came for just uh, for, for people because they heard about Chernobyl they played game and they they went to the site and saw in the site uh, the game but for me it's interesting I know mm -hmm. I, I know that my my understood me uh, for me it's very important what topic can be connected with the values of foreigners who come to us and we. Uh, I think about the program which will uh, 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 how to, to raise attitude to our country in the whole as Chernobyl, not as a, as a disaster. It's yeah. also the, uh, the responsibility for our government and also it's very how to, responsibility for people who live here. Of course. And I think what topic will be very important to show Chernobyl not as a game and show Chernobyl yes. as a local people who connect with the zone, who connect with uh, past and future, I think about this. Yeah, that, that, it's very, very it, it is. So very mm -hmm. much to uh, as people and the Ukrainian mm -hmm. so Exactly. I ask about this. Yes, I, I, now, now I do understand what, what uh, you were you talking about. I mean, still, yeah. this comparison that comes to my mind is Auschwitz and I cannot leave it because as, um, as Poland is connected with uh, this identity of uh, post-Holocaust country and this Polish concentration camps, uh, that is the notion that is widespread all around the world. And we some, somehow start, try to fight with that or work it. But still, we cannot avoid uh, knowing that. Uh, it is something that I'm starting to be not only aware, but a little bit stressed, frightened, or whatever, that Ukraine is started to be perceived in general as post-Chernobyl country, where the main attraction is Chernobyl. 
because when I uh, observed foreigners uh, participating in that tours, they came for city break in Kiev. Uh, they had great time entertainment in pubs and doing some <coughs> crawling excursions. And they went for one day tour to Chernobyl and that's all they know about Ukraine. Uh, without even connection to the actual situation in Ukraine, like, I mean, political situation, military situation. So that, is, that is something that was, for me, really hard to ac accept somehow or acknowledge or somehow rethink uh, while I was here in um, uh, in uh, spring and uh, later on in July and August, that very many tours were organized as if the Chernobyl was the only place in Ukraine worth seeing and there is nothing more and there was nothing on situation in Ukraine, people of Ukraine, uh, generally speaking about Ukraine as Ukraine as a normal or country where people live. And this gives me that reference to uh, Auschwitz tours organized for uh, people from Israel, especially young people, which are conduct conducted by and organized by the government. And this young Jewish people come to Poland uh, with very strict view on Polish people as anti-Semitic. Uh, anti 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 and they really don't see anything except Holocaust sites. So they come back knowing, don't, don't, and they don't know anything on Poland and the huge work that has been done for these decades and about Poland as a modern country, etc. <laughs> so I think that oversimplification of the Chernobyl zone is huge dangerous for country as hospitable, beautiful land that should be explored. And uh, there is so many wonderful places and heritage except the Chernobyl exclusion zone, which is very attractive, <laughs> including, the, yes, but uh, like, you know, this focus, this attention paid to Chernobyl, I, I think this starts to be maybe a little bit over or, or exaggerated and maybe, the way where in, in the narration um, there is no information about Ukraine at all. I mean, in, in very many tours in which I part participated, that uh, guides only focus on the Chernobyl. They don't speak anything about modern Ukraine. And this is, for me, something strange. And this something. Is task, by the way, you know this is your task, main goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and friendly, I mean, the framework, yes. Yeah, you know, that, that, you know, I am what is called the liquidator from 1986, you know, and for me, Chernobyl is one of the um, applied mitigation uh, projects. Why? Uh, because really, uh, I, everyone who was a group knows that when you said where I'm from Ukraine, oh, Chernobyl. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was the case. Klitschko uh, and Shevchenko footballist when I was. Yeah, you, you, you know, so we are very limited in, you know, this in mass culture, you know. <coughs> and so my idea in particular, connected with Chernobyl tourism and uh, in other activities, <coughs> is uh, what uh, the United Nations uh, in their Chernobyl program uh, called rebranding of Chernobyl as mm -hmm. uh, the land of uh, revival, as the land of renaissance, you know. And my understanding is that we Ukrainians are not the nation of, of the victims of Chernobyl. We are the nations of, the, of those who overcame uh, the, 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 the Chernobyl, you know, who gained knowledge and who now uh, teaches. Well, but, but it, 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 it's a prospective thing to do. So I, I <laughs> Interpretation is uh, the main idea of interpretation to change behavior, mm -hmm. not entertainment in 
the, you know, exchange behavior of the people who are involved in the program. If we invite people to show Chernobyl, we have to d develop some thing. And our thing should be to show our, uh, our nationality, to show we are not victims. In Jap Japanese people are victims. They show that Fukushima is not a place for entertainment and a place for games. They show Fukushima as a big grave. There are a lot of people burned there. But in Fukushima, no. Yes, they, they see you Fukushima. You speak about Hiroshima. Oh, Hiroshima. No, 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 Fukushima. Fukushima, because it was a lot of water and a lot of people were de dead during the accident. The same story, but they don't just see this Fukushima as a, as a place for game or something. Because, of course, it's a good idea for tourists to, uh, to receive brand, to pay money for entertainment. It's very great. But now, now, we are telling about interpretation, not about tourism brand. Interpretation is absolutely different. It's not for pay. It's for to, to change the behavior of the people, to enhance the responsibility of the people. Yes, and exactly, I thought exactly about interpretation. Yes, you, yes. You know, because when I was the guide of the first tours, you know, well, more or less, I, I got accustomed to Chernobyl, frankly speaking. But I, I, I realized that in the beginning of the day and in the end of the tour, the tourists, not all of them, of course, they are different people, you know. Yes. It changes them, you know, and it changes them, I dare say, in a positive way. Yes, and, it, and it is because this site was, uh, I dare say it again, was correctly interpreted by me and, you know, the organizer of the tour. So what I'm saying is that uh, we, uh, we interpret the Chernobyl not as a, you know, uh, in the irreparable loss, but also as a global intellectual, you know, and historical game, uh, you, you know, this is exact interpretation, you know, I'm not speaking about business. I, I think they don't have a game in your concentration camp. You, you oh, know. we have, we, we have Pokemons, we, we do have, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, this is also a great challenge, but, but yes. Yeah. not interpretation, you know, it's absolutely different to things. Okay. Uh,
from Chernobyl in terms of different programs? No, in Chernobyl. Each country, uh, circumstances. Yes, of course. Then I ask, I ask Master Zin, what she can, could recommend us to develop? Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I just said something. Yeah. I think it's yeah. yeah. about yeah. stigma. Yeah. 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 Sorry, sorry. It's just stigma. It's a, well, I think, uh, Natalia, yeah. yeah. just ask about the, the goal. I think you're doing quite good because what you're doing, you're just trying to get rid of the stigmatization. Because yeah. I completely agree with uh, Vladislav, because no one is victims. Because exactly. we're so tired, and Ukraine should understand that uh, we are not uh, by mental. Uh, um, Habits or um, authenticity are uh, too um, so-called um, too much authentic in being a victim, yeah. <laughs> or victimized or whatever, yeah. or stigmatized. Yeah. So the idea is just you know what you are doing. This is a good idea to have with this sense of humor and to be to have fun in this serious serious understanding what everything. This is what yeah. I, this is my personal point of view. But if, if uh, we would be very happy to, to get some more information from you about yes, yes. Well, it's very important. Well, I, I believe <laughs> that, 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 that we will finish her research. Let's meet again. Yeah. Yeah. Universal. What we project on the national level, yeah? yes. what we think about ourselves, what we represent outside, what image of the country we make, so how it comes back to us, yeah. and what effect it has on us when we've got this double reflection. Exactly. Yes, so it's I mean, it's different. You took the program from, for example, in Hungary, people who lived on the border with Soviet country in. Austria, yeah, they yes, develop yeah. program yeah, yeah. to, 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 to tell the story about it. I was just trying to say that to your question, there couldn't be a one uh, generalized answer given because it very much depends on, again, country, age, mm -hmm. and lots of other circumstances. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. every group, every yeah. tour, every yeah. interference in the topic is unique. I know it's very much because interpretation is developed for audience in front of you every time. Every program is new. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely correct. But, but for me, what was interesting how we can develop like story people who live here, not victim, people who live, who, who saw the situation and to discuss not as a victim, as, mm -hmm. as a, a real, real culture. Mm -hmm. I, I think about it. Yeah, yeah, so this is this is this storytelling of witnesses. I mean, like this this intro. Not about victims. Storytellers, it's, it's maybe fun, it may be interesting, it may be entertaining, but storytellers. I ask about topic which okay. as a storyteller, not about victims. It's a hit that victim. Or we always all clones, all clowns, all victims. We don't see any any, any victims clowns. I think about storytelling people who live here. To tell their story from Chernobyl, did Magdalene cut the story? Do you I, I think that this is something that guides do when they engage with this personal experiences, and this is witnessing, and this is overcoming, and this is this authentic uh, perspective, and something that shows that th there is not only disaster as disaster, but also something for the future, because young people want to work there, and shows this, th this, this connection to the future, That's, that we are able to work there, and have fun, and want to make friends, and there is so whole so community at on Facebook, uh, uh, grouping uh, people interested in Chernobyl, and I think this is wonderful because this is like the space for dialogue for the future and being responsible for that heritage as well. Okay, any more questions? Well, thank you. I believe it was a perfect lecture. It was a wonderful <laughs> discussion, you know, and I am very grateful for everyone in this audience, you know, for uh, personal involvement interest, you know, for engagement in the deep sense, you know, I believe we, all of us did a good job and uh, very useful for, not only for us personally and for us as a group, but also 
for, for Chernobyl uh, topic and for Ukraine in general. Many things, and I hope that we will meet in this place, you know, on uh, different occasions, and we will have a lot less successful uh, events. So, good luck and many things. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and perfectly on time. <laughs> <laughs> but refers to some information that are shared, are objective. And um, this authentic experience means, means not only subjective authenticity, but also objective authenticity, that the guide has knowledge on the uh, facts from the past, so knows the numbers, knows uh, some uh, documents. So this is about knowledge. Uh, guide should be knowledgeable, should be an expert of the site, not only somebody who entertains group. And then, uh, ecumen. So this is the notion taken from uh, the um, ancient times. Uh, ecumen is a land a landscape or place, site, uh, where, to which we feel attached to, uh, where community lives and we feel uh, within that safety. So uh, if we treat uh, the Chernobyl exclusion zone as, as home, let's say because ecumen we can, we can compare to home, to, to feeling um, to that feeling to that attachment of being responsible for because this is connected with our identity. So here we can interpret the role of guide as a host. Then something that links uh, directly with uh, the notion of uh, uh, existential tourism because uh, that mode of existential uh, tourists is taken from Eric's Cohen topology. Uh, where he writes about spaces of hierophany in tourism environment. I know that this is kind of exaggeration to uh, talk about guides as a priest, but this is about being that man or woman or person who reveals the truth. And it is connected with kind of um, sacrum because of the values, because of the values that are hidden and uh, this is connected with some rituals always, even if we don't talk it, uh, if we don't treat it in religious uh, way, uh, in, in religious manner, still I think that everybody knows uh, what I want to say, that this is kind of um, very special, uh, very special um, practice that reveals truth um, and opens for some values that are hidden. And the last one, which is also obvious, that place of entertainment that guides should work as an animator to give some space also for positive <laughs> engagement, not only talking about very serious matters. Conclusions. So uh, this is the final slide. Um, there are different strategies of guiding and they also are connected with some tensions so to guarantee educational value but on the other, ha on, on the other hand to ensure some homogeneity of uh, the presentation of the issues um, but also this heterogeneity of the local context which is very very particular here. Um, uh, the consequences, the memory of disaster and consequences of it are somehow proceed through the uh, prison <coughs> of guide's personal relationship with the zone and each guide has its own uh, personal relationship and even if it's not revealed each time, still it is and the fundamental element of this relationship is, as I said, is I observe it kind of circle of interpretation and also this performativity which comes from the work with different people uh, in changing environment. So uh, this, is, this is always very, very flexible and it changes all the time. So it needs from you kind of openness uh, for new experiences. And finally, just to make it more positive, I really think that the um, like, role of guide in the Chernobyl exclusion zone is not only crucial, but also is something that um, 
can be referred to Mark Twain's um, idealistic point of view. Uh, but still, it happens. Not always maybe in tourism, because tourists are regarded to be barbarians nowadays. And it is also true about mass tourism. But it is a chance, uh, it is a great challenge for changing world. And these are maybe very, very general, huge generalizations, but I feel that tourism uh, is something very, very posi positive and it opens um, uh, ourselves for a dialogue with other people and change for change for better. Okay, thank you so much. And now we can discuss it. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Magdalena, for, for this uh, truly impressive presentation in many aspects, eye-opening uh, presentation. You know? <laughs> I can understand why uh, rather my famous universities of Rochester, of, no, of Milan, <laughs> of Sofia, and University, Please. European University of Vienna uh, have, cho uh, have chosen uh, Magdalena as the visiting professor to to deliver lecture for their students. So we are very much privileged and many thanks uh, really for, um, you, you know, I, I'm pretty sure anyone in this whole audience uh, had developed uh, uh, many important, uh, not even thoughts, but trains of thoughts, I would say. So you are welcome, please, if you have, you have any questions, uh, you are welcome to ask. If you need uh, translation, I will be greatly translate and uh, Magdalena understands the uh, Russian. Yes. So. I, I okay. can try. Please, 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 you, you can criticize as well. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, I don't uh, know any studies like that. I can search for it because it's extremely interesting uh, what you are talking about. Uh, you mean that like a person is uh, working for one place yeah. for many, many years one and how does it... One of the options yeah. of who the tour guide might be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was that tour guides might be uh, a priest. Yes. And it leads me to the thought that in some circumstances, the tour guide might become a game of Yeah. Yeah. After years. Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, at my point is whether any, mm -hmm. any research on mm -hmm. uh, Well, I will seek for it. <laughs> um, I mean, like, the, there are. I think there is some niche uh, in research uh, when we uh, when we think about guiding, and uh, there are no so many studies on tour guiding. There are few of them, and I know some of them. They're like this per uh, this anthropological uh, perspective is very very strong. Uh, like Noel Salazar's, for example, studies very very interesting, but it's more oriented into the interpretation processes as well. Uh, but this, um, yes, dem demographic issue, I would say, <laughs> lifelong term study would be exceptionally interesting. So I will, I will try to find something on that uh, or ask others, maybe they know it because like, you know, sometimes there is some article paper on something and you just don't have access to it because you didn't try to think about it. But this is something that I'm also keen on finding. <laughs> Thank you. Really, Interesting you know, part. My feeling is uh, that uh, in the topic of uh, connection uh, of, uh, of the, the guides uh, to the site, uh, Chernobyl will be again a pioneer in site. Uh, yeah. To start this research. 
and moreover, I have to tell you that it's quite interesting that similar ideas arrive, uh, um, appear simultaneously in totally different hands. Uh, next Sunday, 17th of February, uh, we will have a tour to the Chernobyl Zoo with a crew of uh, uh, Dutch, uh, New, New Netherlands, uh, TV uh, crew. Mm -hmm. They will film, uh, they will make a, a documentary film about the guides, I emphasize, about the guides which lead the tours uh, to the uh, um, traumatic sites. Mm -hmm. uh, Chernobyl naturally is number one, then there will be the site of uh, earthquake in uh, Italy, mm -hmm. and the third site is uh, Damascus, Syria. Mm -hmm. you know, and so they will uh, film uh, um, tour, uh, Chernobyl tours uh, trip mm -hmm. uh, with me and with, uh, with the former worker of the um, Chernobyl nuclear power plant, Alexei Preus, uh, to, to the Chernobyl zone, you know, and mm -hmm. it will be a documentary and uh, of course it will be a TV program, well, you know, and they started like two years ago and I feel that it will be something uh, above, uh, you know, average level of reporting mm -hmm. uh, because they are, they are very you know, fundamental, you know, and, and very clever, very intrigued minded guys, uh, not prejudiced, which, mm -hmm. which is very important. Yeah, I, I think that if, if I may comment on yeah, what you yeah, said, yeah, it's, <laughs> uh, it's uh, very interesting to uh, find this uh, more general framework for situ uh, situating uh, the Chernobyl, uh, Chernobyl's tourism within. So, as we already talked uh, earlier, this is not dark tourism, this is not tourism of well, death. Is, is the only definition, <laughs> yes, and interpretation, so we can call it also post-apocalyptic or post-disaster tourism and this is not like the issue, the main issue, but this is, uh, this is the issue that we can find different disasters and catastrophes all around the world and it doesn't mean that it, can, it, it is natural catastrophe, it can be a terrorist attack and with this sites there is particular memory work connected, we work with traumatic experiences and tourism can stimulate that work and can, can help to overcome trauma. As in Grand Zero, it's happening, as it's happening in Holocaust tourists, and it's happening here. So not only education, but also experiencing and confronting with traumatic experiences in order to go further, in order, in order to move on uh, with that very difficult past. Yeah. We, we, we will keep a harmony between a thematic organization, yes. relevance, and also entertainment. As for how do you think, who's the best, who's the best the phenomenon to choose to develop entertainment in this, in this case? Because I think it's a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. Because if we miss the entertainment, we receive only lecture or some scientific presentation. Mm -hmm. So, how do you think? What's the best way to okay. develop this? E okay. Well, right. actually. I don't define entertainment as simply fun <laughs> and <laughs> not only going um, to amusement park <laughs> so we can have entertainment there. Although I, I saw some project on uh, like reconstruction of amusement park, like, this is like I, uh, kind of a intellectual project only to, uh, re of revitalization of amusement park to open it for visitors. But I don't know what is your <laughs> pers perspective on that. But um, entertainment um, for me means engagement. So a part, like um, aspects of entertaining uh, uh, can be experienced by visitors while a tour guide, for example, engage them in a kind of a game. So you can, uh, this is um, like during one of the tours, or I think with Chernobyl tour, uh, the guide um, proposed a game that's uh, near the Duga radar um, uh, that you can just think about yourself what would what would you do if you have just two minutes of your life as 
those workers at Duga uh, Radar had in mind during their work. So they were prepared for that moment that it can be some um, moment of starting Cold War when, when they have just two minutes of, of life on. And it was kind of a game performance for tourists. What would they do? And um, this engagement was kind of entertaining. Of course, there were very funny answers like, I would have sex because that would be the last moment in my life to have some pleasure. Uh, or I would drink uh, two liters of vodka not to be conscious in the moment of my death. So it was like a funny moment because the comments were funny. Uh, but still this entertaining process went by. Uh, and thanks to it, uh, the guide could show the context uh, in different way, not only lecture. So there was a situ there was a possibility that Cold War would start, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But through that engagement and kind of performance, uh, people uh, could really feel what that meant in that uh, particular time, especially for young people who really did didn't have the experience of living in Cold War and they don't feel the risk and dangerous connected with that. It was something very touchy. Uh, so I mean that entertainment, oh, just I heard uh, like the comment of one of the guides that Tarzan uh, dog is our natural entertaining part, entertainment. So like feeding dogs or taking pictures with them, this is like this, the, the moments of having some fun and pleasure and not thinking about the serious aspects all the time or taking food porns uh, in the canteen. Also, shall we eat this radioactive uh, meat or not? Or this is so big portion that it's for sure it is radioactive, etc., etc. So this funny comment somehow helps us to um, experience that um, that situation and work with that because it's somehow sometimes very difficult. Like I know there are, I know guides who work in Auschwitz Birkenau and because of their personal connections with Holocaust, uh, they even um, give some anecdotes or they make jokes on on Jewish people and Holocaust. But it can be possible only for those who, <laughs> who are somehow, um, you know, witnesses. Uh, while for, for others it could be offensive. Uh, so uh, this, this entertaining process uh, needs this very, very huge ethics uh, connected. And if you are ethical within that, then you can entertain your group while educating them. Yeah, it's a very good question. And the it's a great is, question. Yeah, it's great it's question and great answer, I have to, uh, to tell. You, you know, I, I would uh, like to add a, a couple of sentences. You know, it, uh, usually when we say entertainment, we, uh, it is reduced to pure fun. Uh, mm -hmm. in, you know, uh, ordinary speech. But generally speaking, uh, let's say a, a movie, a serious movie, drama, also formally falls uh, uh, into the category of entertainment. Correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. So basically, ent entertainment in more broad sense means uh, making uh, recipients, audience, to live through emotion, mm -hmm. through emotion, through okay. fact, uh, authentic emotion. And <laughs> that matter, you cannot keep uh, the audience uh, on negative emotions uh, just even one hour, let's say. It's psychologically impossible. And so it's necessary to engage the, yes. the whole uh, scale of emotions, the whole spectrum of emotions, uh, to properly deliver you know, the main message and everything. And speaking of, of the humor, of the anecdotes, you know, I studied uh, psychology, human psychology, studying uh, the health of the Chernobyl activities. I studied uh, how human beings survive in extreme and unusual environments. You know, and uh, it is well, already well known for professionals that uh, the feeling of humor is one of the means of survival. Mm -hmm. You know, and it is not by chance that I call my book the Chernobyl comedy, because uh, it is true uh, during the mitigation processes, 
exactly because it was quite, quite hard. People need, uh, need, needed, you know, this uh, psychological rest, you know, and so there were plenty of humor, and humor was highly respected and in high demand. So it's hu humor is a natural response for mortal danger mm -hmm. for, for, uh, and for hard circumstances. You know, and so it's it's just necessary how uh, to um, to introduce it ethically into a uh, guide's narrations. I mean, being a legislator myself, you know, I can make, make, uh, make rather rough jokes, uh, you know, on, on the trip, but it won't it, uh, it won't be appropriate for the guides of a younger generation. You know, they need, uh, you know, to shape it differently. Okay, yeah, this, is, this is more encouragement. This is more encouragement with a sense of humor. Yes. Humor. Yeah. It's not a period of the It's encouragement. Yes, of course. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of friendship. Yeah. Um, you know, fellowship friendship. Being yeah. friends, not among us. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please, please, Europe. And uh, another question. Uh, how do you think what the most interesting uh, interpreter program will be? For foreigners, for example, not uh, seen. I think about topic. Uh, I mean, topic, top topic, thematic topic tour. The interpretive programs for foreigners in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Yes. How do you think? What? Hmm. Well, you, you ask me, it's a it's great question, but very, very difficult uh, to answer um, because, uh, I mean, there, there are different foreigners and uh, uh, that's, what I, that's what I told you about, that's why I told you about this tailored tours, uh, that the specific needs should be fulfilled. Um, if I, if I think about, generally speaking, about people who are in their mid-20s or 30s, and according to my knowledge, this is uh, most of the people who are coming to, uh, to the exclusion zone, like in yeah, 30, yeah. 35. Um, well, this, this, this question of uh, urbex uh, tourism and um, well, I would refer it to this uh, concept of um, tourism imaginaries, which are uh, fed by uh, media. So when we uh, refer it to the uh, environment of uh, internet and virtual uh, reality, I observe that this, there is very, very big stress, very big highlight and focus on um, different media productions as stalkers computer game. This is something that stimulated uh, yeah. also uh, the popularity of uh, Chernobyl tourism. So there are very many people who are really interested in comparison between virtual Chernobyl, let's say virtual Chernobyl, and the real one. So they are uh, particularly interested in Chernobyl to compare these experiences of virtuality. It can be video game uh, stalker or it can be, there is interesting um, uh, virtual uh, reality project made by Polish company where you can go to, to the Chernobyl with the special glasses and you can experience it virtually. But there are people who still want to feel it physically and they go to Chernobyl because of that physical, embodied experience. So I, I think that this uh, thematic tour can be connected with this virtual perspective on Chernobyl and comparison with some imaginaries connected with that. And it has very strong educational potential as well, uh, like the demythologization of the site, which as I said, like people, just, just today my, my mom uh, called me and like she is so stressed that I'm doing that research and every time I'm in Kiev she asks me, how many times are we going through the Chernobyl exclusion zone? Please don't touch anything, please don't do any, don't drink water, etc., etc. So even though that I explained her, to her so many times that there is no danger, there are no zombies, etc., this myth of the Chernobyl zone is very, very strong. And it is still recreated by virtual media 
and I think it, it could be a great educational program just to base on that imaginaries and try to trace them uh, during physical tour in Chernobyl. That's what I would do. <laughs> I know, maybe Sergei has some, <laughs> some other concepts. No, 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 just a, a small comment. The, uh, I would call it a problem, but the issue with the Chernobyl Dome is, uh, with the Chernobyl Dome heritage, is that it is a multi-faceted, multi-dimensional, mm -hmm. uh, multi-topical, you know, multi-semantic yes. uh, uh, semantic issue. You know, and you cannot fit, uh, fit uh, the whole Chernobyl Topic into one trip, and because of this, we in Chernobyl uh, tour uh, design different tours. Because, yeah. For example, when there was a wave of interest from the players, uh, from the gamers of this uh, uh, video game, you know, we designed special tour for them. But uh, when we visited the sites, which were very uh, truthfully depicted in the game, because the developers of the game they first went to the dome, they featured many. Uh, locations and they uh, truthfully reproduced them uh, in, uh, into the, the, uh, uh, in the game, you know, and so we included those, uh, you know, places of huge interest for those mm -hmm. uh, gamers, you know, but uh, using it uh, as a kind of hook uh, which made the people to visit the zoo, we showed them, you know, the main uh, uh, location, we delivered to them the main ideas which we uh, consider that each post Chernobyl uh, Homo sapiens should know, you know. So we have a certain company policy about what should be uh, introduced, what should we teach about, you know. So there, there were, you know, different groups, we, we opened the table to different aspects. We had industrial tools for the Chernobyl mm -hmm. so when groups of professionals, of students, you know, they study, you know, technical issues. We have uh, groups for ecologists, environmentalists, where they focus mostly, you know, on, on, on those issues. But of course, we always include, you know, the main, uh, several, but very important ideas and locations which should everyone see, you know. So we, we should not uh, limit ourselves just to one, one, one day overview to, to the Chernobyl in, in mm -hmm. Norway. Yes, but I, I think about the situation that I, I don't uh, want to the Chernobyl will be like a, a this game, day, like. Game, game for people, for foreign people, they came for, it's just uh, for, for people because they heard about Chernobyl, they played game and they, they went to the site and saw in the site uh, the game. But for me it's interesting, I know, mm -hmm. I, I know the much more, understood me. Uh, for me it's very important what topic can be connected with the values of foreigners who come to us and we, uh, uh, I think about the program which will uh, 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 how to say, raise attitude to our country as a whole as Chernobyl not as a, as a disaster it's yeah. all the, the uh, responsibility for our government and also it's very responsibility for people who live here. Of course. And I think what topic will be very important to show Chernobyl not as a game, and show Chernobyl yes. as a, a local people who connect with the zone, who connect with uh, past and future. I think about this. Yeah. The, the, it's very, very important it, it to is. show value of Chernobyl uh, as people and Ukraine. Mm -hmm. so exactly. I ask about this. Yes, I, I, now, now I do understand what, what uh, you were you talking about. I mean, still, <laughs> this comparison that comes to my mind is Auschwitz, and <laughs> I cannot leave it because as, um, as Poland is connected with uh, this identity of uh, post-Holocaust country, and this Polish concentration comes, uh, that is the notion that is widespread all around the world. And we some, somehow start, try to fight with that or work it, but still we cannot avoid uh, knowing that. Uh, it is something that I'm starting to be not only aware, but a little bit stressed, frightened or whatever, that Ukraine is started to be perceived in general as post-Chernobyl country where the main attraction is Chernobyl. 
because when I uh, observed foreigners uh, participating in that tour, they came for city break in Kiev. Uh, they had great time entertainment in pubs and doing some <coughs> crawling excursions. And they went for one day tour to Chernobyl, and that's all they know about Ukraine. Uh, without even connection to the actual situation in Ukraine, like, I mean, political situation, military situation. So that, is, that is something that was, for me, really hard to ac accept somehow, or acknowledge, or somehow rethink uh, while I was here in um, uh, in uh, spring and uh, later on in July and August that very many tours were organized as if the Chernobyl was the only place in Ukraine worth seeing and there is nothing more and there was nothing on situation in Ukraine, people of Ukraine, uh, generally speaking about Ukraine as Ukraine, as a normal or country where people live. And this gives me that reference to uh, Auschwitz tours organized for uh, people from Israel, especially young people, which are conduct conducted by and organized by the government. And these young Jewish people come to Poland uh, with very strict view on Polish people as anti-Semitic. Uh, anti 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 and they really don't see anything except Holocaust sites. So they come back knowing, don't, don't, and they don't know anything on Poland and the huge work that has been done for these decades and about Poland as a modern country, etc. <laughs> so I think that oversimplification of the Chernobyl zone is huge dangerous for country as hospitable, beautiful land that should be explored. And uh, there is so many wonderful places and heritage, except the Chernobyl exclusion zone, which is very attractive, <laughs> including, yes, but uh, like, you know, this focus, this attention paid to Chernobyl, I, I think this starts to be maybe a little bit over or, or exaggerated. And maybe the way where in, in the narration, um, there is no information about Ukraine at all. I mean, in, in very many tours in which I part participated, that uh, guides only focus on the Chernobyl. They don't speak anything about modern Ukraine. And this is, for me, something strange. And this something. Task, by the way, you know this is your task, maybe go to do yeah, it. Yeah, you I, and, 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 and a friendly, I mean, this framework, yes. Yeah, you know, you know, I am what is called the liquidator from 1986, you know, and for me, Chernobyl is one of the um, applied litigation uh, projects. Why? Uh, because really, uh, I, everyone who was approved knows that when you said where from Ukraine, oh, Chernobyl. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was the case. Uh, Klitschko and Shevchenko from Paris when I was low, uh, in the group. Yeah, you, you, you know, so we are very limited, if you know, this in mass culture. <laughs> and so my idea in particular, connected with Chernobyl tourism and uh, in other activities, <coughs> is uh, what uh, the United Nations uh, in their Chernobyl program uh, called rebranding of Chernobyl as mm -hmm. uh, uh, the land of uh, revival, as the land of renaissance, you know. And my understanding is that we Ukrainians are not the nation of, of the victims of Chernobyl. We are the nations of, the, of those who overcame uh, the, 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 the Chernobyl, you know, who gained knowledge and who now uh, teaches. Uh, well, well, well it, it, it is a prospective thing to do. I'm sorry, but now you are talk, talking about the uh, tourism and Interpretation is uh, the main idea of interpretation to change behavior, mm -hmm. not entertainment in the 
the, the exchange behavior of the people who are involved in the program. If we invite people to show Chernobyl, we have to develop some thing. And our thing should be to show our, uh, our nationality, to show we are not victims. In Jap Japanese people are victims. They show the Fukushima is not a place for entertainment and a place for game. They show Fukushima as a big grave. There are a lot of people burned there. Well, in Fukushima, no. Yes, they, they see Fukushima. You speak about Hiroshima. Oh, okay. Hiroshima. No, 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 Fukushima. Fukushima, because it was a lot of water and a lot of people were de dead during the accident. The same story, but they don't see this Fukushima as a, as a place for game or something. Because, of course, it's a good idea for tourists to, uh, to receive bread, to pay money for entertainment. It's very great. But now, now we are telling about interpretation, not about tourism. Right? Interpretation is absolutely different. It's not for pay. It's for to, to change the behavior of the people, to enhance the responsibility of the people. Yes, and exactly, I thought exactly about interpretation. Yes, you, yes. You know, because when I was the guide of the first tours, you know, well, more or less I, I got accustomed to Chernobyl, frankly speaking. But I, I, I realized that in the beginning of the day and in the end of the tour, the tourists, not all of them, of course, they are different people, you know. Yes. It changes them, you know, and it changes them, I dare say, in a positive way. Yes, and, so it, and it is because this site was, uh, I dare say, Say it again was correctly interpreted by me and you know the organizer of the tour. So what I'm saying is that uh, we, uh, we interpret the Chernobyl not as a you know uh, in the in reparable loss, but also as a global intellectual you know and historical gain. Uh, you know this is exactly interpretation. You know I'm not speaking about business. I, I think they don't have a game in your concentration camp. Oh, we have, we, we have Pokemons, we, we do have, <laughs> unfortunately this is also a great challenge, but, but yes. Yeah. The of tour is not interpretation, you know, it's absolutely different things. Okay. Well, so I have a few words to see if I may. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to ask uh, a, a colleague, you mentioned when you started your question first about special topic or theme oh, for the foreigner. Yes. Then you switch to yes. talking about responsibility yes. and changing attitude. Mm -hmm. Yes, but who, firstly, I ask uh, uh, you, whose attitude you are thinking to change by means of war? If we look at the situation from the distance, yeah, uh, we are victims because Ukraine, from the moment Soviet Union established its regime here, well, yeah, communist, yeah, and then.
from Chernobyl in, te in terms of different programs? No, each, each country uh, circumstances. Yes, yes, of course. Then I ask her, ask Magda, oh, yeah. what she can, could recommend us to develop. Okay. 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 Habits or um, authenticity are too um, so-called um, too much authentic in being a victim. Yeah. Victimized <laughs> or whatever yeah. or stigmatized. Yeah. So the idea is just you know what you are doing is a good idea to have like, this sense of humor and to be to have fun in this serious serious understanding what I'm doing. This is my personal point of view. But if, if uh, we would be very happy to, to get some more information from you about this. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I believe that when Magdalena will finish her research, we will definitely speak. Yeah. Well, Let's meet again. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
for, for Chernobyl uh, topic and for Ukraine in general. Many things, and I hope that we will meet in this place, you know, on uh, different occasions, and we will have a lot less successful uh, events. So, good luck and many things. Thank you. Well, and perfectly on time. <laughs>